What's going on, Alex Bros? In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the domain, uh, the volume function, which was uh, based on uh, constructing a box out of a piece of sheet metal that's 14 inches long and 10 inches wide by cutting out a square from each corner and turning up the sides. All right, so let's dive right into it. So we kind of want to reason things out uh, in the following manner. Um, in order to form the flats, we have to remove the uh, square corners. And recall that uh, each square is an x by x square. So in order to form a square, period, um, we need x to be greater than 0. So that's one starting point. We also uh, can kind of look at the box itself um, in order to have um, the base of the box, for instance, uh, we would need the uh, length to be greater than zero and we would also need the width to be greater than zero. So basically we're saying that all of the expressions have to be positive, uh, which should hopefully make sense. Otherwise, you know, if one of those sides is zero or negative, you know, we, we don't really have a box to work with. So with that said, not only does x have to be greater than 0, we also need 14 minus 2x to be greater than 0, as well as 10 minus 2x to be greater than 0. And what I'd like to do is solve all three of these inequalities and see what it offers us in terms of values for x that are legitimate to the problem. So the first inequality is already solved for, x is greater than 0. To solve this one, we'll subtract 14 from each side to get negative 2x is greater than negative 14, and then divide each side by negative 2. Keep in mind that when you divide an inequality by a negative, that reverses the inequality symbol, so this is saying that x is less than 7 now. Go ahead and subtract 10 from each side in this third inequality. We get negative 2x is greater than negative 10. And dividing by negative 2 again, and flipping the inequality symbol, this says that x is less than positive 5. So here we have three conditions on x. And what I'm going to do is actually uh, sketch out each of these three conditions using a number line. So over to the right, I'll draw a number line for the first condition, second condition, and then the third condition. And then what I'd like to do is figure out what are the common uh, shaded regions with each of these. So there'll be a fourth number line, and this fourth number line will actually be our domain number line. So as I mentioned before, uh, this first number line right here will be for the first condition, x is greater than 0. So I'm going to put 0 on the number line. I'll shade to the right of it, because x is greater than 0 means positive numbers. And I'll put a parenthesis on 0. For the next number line, we could do x is less than 7. So I'm going to go a little further to the right on this number line, put a tick mark for 7. And we want x to be less than 7, so we're going to shade to the left of this all the way down to negative infinity, parenthesis on the 7. And then we need the number line for x is less than 5. So I'll go somewhere between 0 and 7, put a tick mark for 5. And we'll shade to the left of it, all the way down to negative infinity, parenthesis on the 5. <clears throat> so, uh, what does this mean about the domain of the volume function? We'll say domain of v of x. Well, we're going to want to take what's in common between all three number lines. So, if we look at the first two number lines, the one for x is greater than 0 and the one for x is less than 7, what's common between the first two number lines is the shaded region between 0 and 7. 
However, if we try to uh, group that together with what's in common with the third number line, uh, you would see that we would only have uh, the common area between 0 and 5. Um, so that means that between all three number lines that we have here, uh, looking to see what's in common between all three of them, uh, we would see that it's the uh, area that's between uh, 0 and 5. So, so that part of the number line is what's in common between all three of them. So on this final number line, I'll put a tick mark for, let me get rid of that. I'll put a tick mark for 0, and a tick mark for 5, and then shade what's between those two values, and parentheses on each of them. So in interval notation, what that would mean is that our domain is 0, 5, and parentheses on each of these. So let, let, let's think about that for a second, okay? This is saying that the minimal value for x can be anything that's really, really close to 0. Um, so remember, x has to be greater than 0 in order for us to get squares uh, that we can remove so that we can form the box. And it's also saying that we cannot have any ve uh, x values uh, beyond 5, nor 5 itself. Uh, think about what would happen if we were to use 5 itself. Going up here, if you look at the expression for the width, if x were equal to 5, we'd have 10 minus 10, giving us a width value of 0. So there's no box um, in that case. And if we used x values larger than 5, uh, then the width expression would start to become negative. So for example, if x were 6, uh, we'd have 10 minus 12, giving us negative 2. And obviously, you won't be able to construct a box with uh, a width of negative 2 um, inches. <laughs> so uh, y you can kind of use some common sense here. You know, you could even think about, all right, well, is there like a smallest x value that I shouldn't go beyond uh, when, when thinking about domain values? And uh, the key here is the, the expression 10 minus 2x. Uh, any values of x larger than 5 will begin to make this uh, expression negative. And if we used 5 itself, uh, then the width would be 0. So, um, and, and you would start to get similar results with the length expression. Uh, if, if you used 7, for example, uh, the length would turn into 0, and anything beyond 7 would make that expression negative. But if you're looking for a concrete way of figuring out the domain, then what I have here as a solution for part B uh, is a feasible route. And that's where the pain and torture, I'm sorry, fun and excitement uh, for this video ends. I'll see you in the next one, in which case we will do some stuff on the graphing calculator. Thanks for watching.